Hello, it's Terry Britton, and uh, this is the second of the uh, series of this open broadcast software. And we're now open uh, just at the blank slate that you get when you open up the program for the first time. You get a scene that's called scene, and you've got no sources assigned. So let's go ahead and rename this scene as the first thing we do. We'll rename it uh, webcam only. Okay, and now we'll uh, add the webcam. And so there's two ways of adding. You can right click and hit add, and you know you would add a a source device. But we're going to do something one step better. Just forget what I just showed you for now. Go right to global sources, click on add, and now you add a video capture device. By doing it this way, it'll keep it from glitching when you are changing your cameras or changing scenes from one scene to another. Uh, if it's not a global source and the camera actually turns off and turns back on again, it reloads the camera and reloads the driver. So that's kind of glitchy. It makes the camera fade out and come back in again. It looks bad. If you put it in as a global source, then it stays on all the time and just switching scenes doesn't really affect it. It's always there and available and it's not turning off, not turning on. So we'll use it as a global source here. Okay, so we use this C920. Now on my computer, I have to drop the resolution of my C920 webcam. And I'll have to select that from the list. If I have to lower its resolution, I cannot be at full res or I start getting very bad audio glitches. 1280 by 720, I'm going to click on the custom resolution button and lower to 1280 by 720. Now in reality, since you usually don't use the webcam as a full window recording, and that really is a real processor killer. I've got a quad core and it still really strains my quad core. And uh, you would need a, a i5 or i7, something like that, uh, to really be comfortable with 1080, you know, P type of capture from your webcam. So even though it's capable of doing it, I can tell you it it won't like it getting the all 1920 by 1080. Besides which, you usually make the size of the you know picture smaller so that it's just part of a larger picture or combined with other people talking. So I recommend highly if you don't have a super super powerful processor in your computer, to drop this down to 1280 by 720. Uh, I got audio clicking really bad by not doing this. And let me tell you, do you want to do it? Now you can click on the configure button and bring up the menu in order to configure your software and do the zoom and all that kind of stuff. But just uh, you won't have to worry about that right now. Let's just leave everything as is for the time being and click OK. The big deal was we picked this from the drop down and we lowered its resolution to something reasonable. Now if all you were going to do is use little windows by the way, if all, you were always going to have your webcam in small windows, you can go ahead and take even less strain off your processor so that you can have more processor power available to upload to actually stream a 1080p show. Because if it's not motion video or webcam content then 1080p is not impossible to upload with many, many, you know, lower quality processors than an i7 or an i5. My quad core does 1080p streams fine if I'm using a smaller webcam window and I can have background and everything. So if you see my other shows, you'll see what I'm talking about. So, uh, but, so you can actually pick smaller, like the, uh, 864 by 480 is a good comfortable size. Uh, 800 by 4, even the 640 by 360. If you're always having your webcam be in a small window, then don't have it send to the program anything larger than you actually are using. See what I'm saying? However, you can resize these things uh, using the software, as you'll see in the scenes editor, which we're going to cover in the next video. But I'm just giving you some input there that you, when you're picking these, at least lower it 
if you got a 1080p camera, I recommend lowering it to the 1280 by 720 or lower. Okay. All right. So we're going to stick with 1280 by 720. Now we have this device in here that we can use. And so now when you right click on there and add, hit add, you can go to the global sources and pick your webcam and just leave it that name. And now you've got this, uh, this webcam in there that you can, you can see. So let's go ahead and preview the stream and you'll see it fills the entire window. Well, it doesn't that try lower the resolution. Now this is, I've got it set up to be a very large 1080p capture area. And, uh, you can make this fill the screen by hitting fit to screen. But like I say, most of the time you won't actually be doing that. So, uh, but just so you can see, there you go. If I did, if I was doing it, but look, I'm already getting a warning down here, taking long, too long to encode <laughs> a little warning that, uh, trying to tell me that it doesn't like doing it. So I'm going to right click on this thing again and hit position size and say reset size to the regular 1280 by 720 size of the video. And I'm going to do control C to move it to the middle. Okay. You'll see a whole bunch of little shortcut keys all through here and you can memorize those. Control C centers it, control all C centers it horizontally, control shift C vertically. Think of the shift key as vertically one above, above the control key and it gives you the mem mnemonic and you can move to the left edge, the right edge, up, down with the arrow keys by holding the control and alt key down and any of the arrow keys. I'll go ahead and show you. So there you go. You see, I can move around. I can uh, control C to center. Or I can uh, move it up and uh, over to the left and, and then center it that way. Or I can... Uh, Move it over here and, and then center it that way. Okay, so you see how that works. Uh, so you have this push button control even while the show is going on that you can be moving things around. And we haven't even done anything with editing scenes yet. Uh, we haven't hit the edit scene button. This is all stuff that you can do live while the show is happening too. Uh, so you can do all this stuff while the show is live. I can edit it, I can crop it, I can do all kinds of stuff. I can move it around. Anyway, uh, let's add another scene. And so we're going to this time add a scene and we'll call it uh, webcam and monitor. And notice it blanked out just then because I have no, no devices in there. So we'll go and get my webcam and I'm going to add another device to this. Let me center it. I'll go ahead to global sources and I'll add another. And this time I'm going to add monitor capture. And the reason I'm adding it as a global device again is so that it doesn't switch off and turn back on again. There we go. And it's monitor one, I believe. We'll know in a second. Capture your mouse cursor. Basically you don't really have to touch anything in here. There we go. So now we have that and I'll add that to this one from the global sources and my monitor capture. And so now it's on top, you'll notice. And uh, I'm going to go in here to order and move it down or I could move it to the bottom. Same thing in this case. And so now I've got my monitor capture and uh, here's my program moving around behind there because so, I'm just capturing the whole monitor. Okay. And, uh, so that's pretty, pretty neat, huh? You're actually seeing me adding all this stuff during the preview and I could be doing this during a live show too. I could have the show actually running and be adding scenes on the fly. Now, one thing that's really cool about scenes, you'll notice that here's webcam only and here's without, is that I can add a shortcut key and I'm going to do that right away, set a hotkey. So I'm going to set a uh, hotkey of Control and Shift and W to be webcam only. Because often Control and Shift isn't really being used by much. Remember, it is used by the center 
uh, for for the vertical centering. So don't use Control Shift C. And let's see, webcam and monitor. I'll use uh, I'll use the the Q, I guess. So uh, we'll go ahead and set a hotkey key. Control Shift Q. So now when I do Control Shift W, I go to that. Control Shift Q, I go to that. So it's all done by shortcut keys, and that way I can be running the show without having to look at everything. Let's go ahead and rename these. Again, we already saw renaming, and I'll just uh, say W hyphen, so I remind myself what the shortcut key is, and rename this one with a Q and a hyphen. Okay, so that's all you really need to know to get started, to get some things going on where you've got uh, some webcam and all that. I'll show you in the next video how to actually get, uh, how to edit these scenes and how to like change the size of my, uh, my webcam window, for instance, and do a couple of other things, okay? So, uh, so but you learned a lot in this one. This, this video right here should get you going and you should be able to uh, start right away jumping into using OBS to, for recording. Uh, but in the next one, we're going to cover getting the audio working and then adding a scene, uh, editing a scene. Okay, see you later.